Okay, so today we're going to start chapter five. And uh, two chunks to this um, lesson. One is a bunch of definitions, and these are all the terms that we're going to talk about, and you're going to write definitions for, because remember what we said early on is that most of the time you're going to end up writing the definitions. And I know you know these things. You know what a circle is. But coming up with a legitimate geometric definition is a little bit more challenging. And then, once we get all this taken care of, we're going to then start looking at some problems involving uh, area. And we'll get to that in a second. So, uh, let me grab a pen. And uh, let's get started. Okay, simple question. What color is the circle? Yellow. Yellow, correct. So, this is the circle. If you didn't realize that, then please leave the class. Now, the hard part, what is a circle? You need a definition. So let's go way back before you start firing off definitions. Early on in the class, after we got done with the algebra, we started geometry. We said there were three building blocks of geometry, points, lines, and planes. And so before you give me a definition, my question is, what is this circle made up of? No. No, points. Points, correct. How many points? Infinite. Good. So that circle is made of an infinite number of points. That's n we don't need to use that in the definition, but we want to keep that in our mind as we're writing the definition for a circle. So I will ask for suggestions first, and then I'll start calling on people. Anybody have an idea for the definition of a circle? What makes all those yellow points special to the point that they form a circle? Anybody in here? Anybody at home? No? Rachel, give it a shot. What do you think? Um, uh, a round figure that has points. Okay, it's not horrible. It's a good starting point, but does that satisfy your definition? Not really, no. Wait, wait, wait. Does it satisfy your definition? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but is it a circle? No. No. Okay, so how can we take your definition and tweak it a little bit to get it to look like what we really want a circle to look like? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Somebody else? Philip, let's go with you. Philip W. Yes. What do you got for me? How do I change this blobby looking thing into a circle? Um, it would have to be like uh, an even curve. Good. How do I get that even curve? Um, by making it like there is a point in the middle, it would have to be... There is, good. By the way, oh, hold on, let me interrupt you, Philip. sorry. That's the, called the center. Circles don't have right. midpoints, they have centers. Okay, so yeah, I got that point in the middle. Keep going. You're getting there. The, I don't know which one it's, it's called. It would have to be, one of the things would have to be like even all the way around. Almost perfect. Okay, but just to make sure, I know what you're saying, but I want to make sure everybody else understands. Could you clarify a little bit more about what you mean about even all around? I don't know if it's the diameter and the radius. Okay, terminology doesn't matter. Clarify a little bit more what you're talking about. So if I put a, a, a center in this blob from, from Rachel, what's different from the blob versus the circle. The distance between the center and the actual like, circle. Love it. Okay, so what's true in a circle versus the blob? The distance from the center to the circle is the same all around. Outstanding. Couldn't have done it better myself. Do you mind if I take that and run with it? Uh, no, I don't mind. I didn't think you would. Good. 
Every point on that circle, all infinite number of points, end up being the same distance away from that given point, which is called the center. Now, common mistake. The center of the circle is not part of the circle. You have to consider it being like a hula hoop. You guys know what a hula hoop is, right? Okay, good. It's all right. Okay, so it's just the hula hoop. It's not the center. By the way, symbol for circle, I think we've done this before, but it's a little circle with a dot in the middle of it. Okay, so if we name, let's say we call this point X, we would call this circle X. Okay, it's named by its center. Beautiful. Okay, Brooke, uh, which one's the radius? What color is it? Say again? Good. Okay, that's the easy part. Now, what's the radius? Almost perfect. What's your mistake? Yes and no, it's a segment, not a line. Okay, remember lines go on forever. A segment from the center to any point on the circle. Beautiful. And uh, we'll use lowercase r to represent the radius. Ethan. Yeah. What color is the diameter? Uh, green. It is green. What's the diameter, Ethan? Uh, a segment from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle. Uh, a segment. Specifically opposite ends. Oh. Could you clarify that a little bit more? Uh, not really. Okay, so we have this other thing. I'm not going to name it yet, but this red segment. Okay. What's the difference between the green segment and the red segment? Well, the uh, green segment, it, well, it goes from one end of the circle to the other, while the other just goes from a diagonal to a closer point. Uh, I know what you're saying, but can you, okay, hold on. Brooke, what do you got to contribute? The difference is the diameter passes through the center of the circle. Good. So, Ethan, what you're saying was 100% correct. If we clarify it a little bit more, it makes it easier to define. A segment connecting two points on a circle passing through the center. By the way, I know center, or I know through is spelled T-H-R-O-U-G-H. I just, I'm abbreviating. Okay, good. Uh, that's a lowercase d. Uh, Ethan, I'm almost done with you. What's the relationship between the length of the diameter and the length of the radius? Uh, the radius is half the diameter. Beautiful. Or the diameter is twice the radius. Good. We'll come back to that in a second. We don't need to talk about the center. It's just the point in the middle of the circle. Great. Um, let's see, Aiden, which one's the chord? What color is it? Uh, the red. Good. That's the easy part. Now here's the hard part. What is a chord? Uh, I have no idea. Well, if you base it off of the discussion we had on the diameter, how is a chord different or similar to the diameter. Well, it's a line that goes through the circle, but it's shorter. Good. Keep going. Uh, I have no idea. Go ahead. Um, it's like a line that goes through the circle that connects to ends, but doesn't go through the middle. Good. Uh, by the way, you guys keep doing the same thing. It's a segment. Not a line connecting any two points on a circle. So we, we could define it in two different ways. 
That definition is perfect. However, we could say that it's not a diameter, that it doesn't pass through the center of the circle, but what I prefer to do is the whole golden retriever and dog thing. So by leaving the definition as that, we're saying a chord connects any two points on the circle. Sometimes that chord will pass through the center. If it passes through the center, then the chord becomes a diameter. So all diameters are chords, but not all chords are diameters. Does that make sense? Yeah, people at home, does that make sense? Good, okay. Um, the one that I didn't list here that I'll put over here is that line sitting over on the side. And that line is called a tangent line. And it is truly a line and a tangent line. Now, and this is also confusing. We've talked about, you've heard that word tangent before. We did sine, cosine, and tangent. This has nothing to do with that. I don't know why they reuse a word like this, but it is a line that intersects a circle in exactly one point. Whoops. Exactly one point. So chords and diameters hit the circle twice. Tangent lines hit the circle only once. Go. Did you say the mathematicians were lazy, so maybe they just recycled the word? They are very lazy, yes. They, it could very well be they couldn't come up with another reason for it. OK, good. Um, let's talk about circumference. What's the circumference of a circle? Colin, any ideas? The, the distance around it. Perfect. Couldn't even set it better. Say that loud so everybody can hear you and write it down while I'm taking off my sweatshirt. The distance around the circle. Good. Okay, that's better. Distance around a circle. And we use capital C, not lowercase c, capital C for circumference. Colin, would you happen to know the formula for the circumference of a circle? Anybody? Go. Something to do with pi. Good. Um, I don't remember the rest of it. Anybody at home? Two pi r. Nicely done. Circumference is equal to two pi r. Or, if you're feeling saucy, d pi. Based on what Ethan told us earlier, that if the, if the diameter is twice the radius, or the radius is half the diameter, we can do that substitute. OK. Is it safe to assume you all know what area means? Yeah? OK, good. Then anybody, oh, by the way, capital A. Does anybody know the formula for area of a circle? also involves pi, pi r squared. Wow, that looks like a mess. But hopefully it makes sense, yes? Any questions on any of this stuff? For those of you at home, any questions? If you're good to go, give me a thumbs up, please, so I know you at least have a pulse. Outstanding. Got most of you, OK? We're going to take that idea and we're going to play with it a little bit. So let's do a very simple problem involving a circle. And we'll stick in a radius here. And uh, Nico, what day of the month were you born on? 25th. Okay, so we're going to make that radius, whoops, we're going to make that radius 25 feet. Okay. Two things I'd like to know. What's the circumference and what's the area? Fairly simple problems. However, I'd like you to do them anyways because what we need to talk about when you're done is, number one, did you get the right answers? And number two, the difference between exact answers an approximate area. So solve both of those, please. I'll give you about a minute to do that while I go get a drink. Don't be bashful while fussing out those calculators. Is there a button on the calculator for pi? 
You bet there is. Half the challenge. Yeah, you found it. I knew you would. What are we drinking today? Okay, Lily, what do you got for a circumference? Um, about 157.1. Can somebody confirm? About 157.1. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go back through this and do the work that she did. So obviously we're starting with the formula 2 pi r. We know that because we just talked about it. The radius is 25, so we put in 2 times pi times 25. Okay, so this is going to let us branch off into two possible answers. So what you told me, Lily, was one, I, I have the attention span of a goldfish. What did you say, 150? Um, 157.1. Good. That would be an approximate answer. So I'm assuming you got that by doing 2 times the pi button times 25. Right? Okay. Don't use 3.14. Use the pi button because we want to get an answer as, accurate as accurately as possible. Okay? Approximate answer. I think we've talked about pi in the past, but pi is a number that goes on forever and never repeats. Therefore, you can never actually write out the number pi other than by using the symbol. However, I might also ask you for an exact answer. An exact answer involves pi in it. Depending on the problem, sometimes an exact answer would be kind of silly. Like if, for instance, we were calculating, uh, let's suppose you were making a, uh, a dog pen for your dog in the backyard and you were making it circular, which nobody ever does, but it's the best I can do. I might ask you how much fencing you need. Well, you're not going to go into Home Depot and ask for 50 pi feet of fencing. That's ridiculous. So you'd want 157.1. Okay. Beautiful. Nora, what'd you get for an area? right, but I got 1,963.5. Can somebody confirm? We have a confirmation. Okay, so uh, give that to me. Give me that again, Nora. 1,000. 963.5. What are my units on that? Um, feet squared. Perfect. Enough people got it right, so I'm assuming you're correct. But again, starting with a blank formula, I assume you put in 25 there. Whoops. I jumped the gun there. 25 squared. Okay, so then that's my approximate answer. However, if I asked you for my exact answer, you would get 625 pi feet squared. And notice the units on area are squared units. The units on circumference are linear because that's something you're measuring with the tape measure. Okay, good. How could we make it more interesting? Well, let's suppose you go to the store and you buy your fencing and you have a thousand feet of fencing. We can work that problem backwards to figure out how much area will this circular dog run have in it. We could work backwards to find out what the radius is. It opens up a, a whole new can of worms for types of problems, which you'll see some of those on the homework. Okay, questions? We're good? Pretty straightforward? Okay, let's talk about area then. So we're going to do some more area calculations, and I know we did everything circles, and now all of a sudden I've got 
this thing up there, this C looking thing. We're gonna talk about two different ways to find area. One is called an additive method and one is called a subtractive method. And I think is what, what's gonna work better is I'm gonna have you solve this problem and then we'll talk about the difference between the two because what I have found is some of you will do one method, some of you will do the other. We'll compare and contrast when we're done, okay? Good, so those of you at home and those of you here, solve that problem, please. Tell me the area of the orange area. The area of the orange area. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And again, don't be bashful about busting out your calculators. You're gonna need them. Hello, Ms. Bray, how are you? Good, every day, how are you? Every day. slice it this way or this way? Vertical or horizontal? <laughs> Did you slice it horizontally or vertically? Yeah, you slice it. Well, you must have if you broke it into smaller rectangles. Right? Oh, yeah, I sliced it right over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got seven. That's a good start. Let's see, who can we uh, ask now? Izzy, what do you got? Did you get an answer yet? Yeah, I got 132. Okay, hold on one second. Anybody else, 132? Okay, so that's okay. Nobody agrees with you, that doesn't mean you're wrong, but let's talk about how you did it. So could you talk me through the method that you used to get that answer? Nine. Good. To get this, right? Yes. Yeah, so okay. Then, All right, good. Keep going. And then um, I did 18 minus 13 to get 5, which is going across. Awesome. Keep going. And then I did, um, oh, I realized what I did wrong. But, that's, o um, that's okay. Keep going. I'll keep going. So I did, um, I did five times five, but I should have done five times 18 to get the top one, but I like forgot to add the other part. Okay, so if, if I'm understanding correctly, did you do this? Yeah. Okay. No, I did, yeah, I did that. Like okay. I split it up, but I did five times five instead of five times 18 to get the top one. Good. Okay, so how many people sliced it this way? Good. Okay, this is called the additive method for solving this problem because what she did is she broke it into smaller regions. 
she went and calculated the area of each of those regions and then added them up. Okay, good. Did anybody do it differently? And I see at least two different ways to solve this. Anybody at home? Brendan, what'd you do? Um, well, I did 16 minus 9 to get the 7. Good. And then I did 16 times 18. Ooh, perfect. And then, yep, keep going. And then 13 times 7, and then I subtracted that from 16 times 18. Excellent. Okay, so Brendan did what's called the subtractive method. He found the area of the big rectangle, 16 times 18, and then he subtracted this wasted space in here. Okay, uh, just for giggles, Brendan, what'd you get for an answer? Uh, 197. 197? Okay, good. And Izzy, you know what you did wrong, right? Yeah. So your method was solid, your calculation was off a little bit. Yeah. Good, okay. This problem can be solved using either method. They both get you the same answer, so it doesn't matter which method you want to use. A lot of it has to do with how your brain sees it. Do you see this as a rectangle with a chunk bitten out of it, or do you see a, uh, this as a figure that's put together with other rectangles? The other way, by the way, that some people may have done it is slicing it this way. Again, same results. You can break it into whatever shapes you want. On some problems, you will have the option to use whichever technique you want. Very seldomly, if ever, will I say to you, find the area of this figure using the additive method or find the area of this figure using the subtractive method. I'll just let you go however you want to do it, as long as you can get to where you need to go. However, sometimes, like this guy, you're almost forced to use a certain method. So this weird pencil looking thing, it's pretty hard to do this as a subtractive method. I don't know what I'm going to turn it into a giant rectangle. But if you look at it as an additive, it's real easy. You've got a triangle, region one. You've got a rectangle, region two. And you've got a semicircle, region three. And obviously, I didn't give you numbers there because I didn't really want to solve the problem. I just wanted to talk about it. Um, by the way, how do you find the area of a semicircle? Any questions? Okay, so the homework for tonight is split into two major parts. One is all this stuff. Identifying parts of a circle, finding the area of a circle, finding the circumference of a circle, working with circles. Now there's a lot of other components to the circle we haven't talked about, like um, arcs and sectors and segments and all this other stuff. But for now, this is a good start. The second half of the homework is going to be problems involving area, either additive or subtractive problems. Okay? Questions? Beautiful. Uh, I apologize for taking so long to grade the quizzes. It was rather difficult because what I did is I followed mistakes through to the end to make sure you did it correctly. What I mean by that is if you were uh, calculating a slope, for instance, and you had a minus sign wrong, that screws up everything, and I didn't want to mark all the other parts wrong, so I had to go through and follow your work based on that wrong value. So it did take a while to grade them. They are uh, posted, and you can take a look at that. Other than that, you've got day one from chapter five to work on.